No, run, 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 run. Oh, there's more up here. Go. Oh, this isn't gonna go. Oh. Welcome to Circuit Board. Grab a screwdriver. So this is it. Episode one of the new Circuit Board. I don't want to beat around the bush for too long, so let's get right down to it. This week we're going to be taking apart three PowerBook 1400s, each with their own faults and flaws, and then doing some Frankenstein-esque combining of the three of them into one supremely specced PowerBook 1400C. If you don't know much about the PowerBook 1400, I'll give you a little rundown. The Macintosh PowerBook 1400 was lugged onto the scene in October 1996, during one of Apple's most historically terrible years. I don't want to get too down into the reads on this, but the long and short of it is that Apple's sales fell 30% in the quarter that this computer was released. Preceded by the dreadful PowerBook 5300, the 1400 was available in two variants. The low-end 1400CS with a passive matrix display, and the pricey 1400C with a rather nice active matrix. This brings us on to what we're doing today and why I have three of these machines in front of me. This 1400CS is in rather nice condition, apart from a slightly cracked hinge cover, and it has all the bits on the back that are often missing from this machine. This 1400CS has been heavily upgraded, containing a G3 CPU card, a video output card, and the maximum 64 megs of RAM. And this PowerBook 1400C is in mm, kind of shoddy condition, with some bits missing and a flappy rear panel, but has the all-important 1400C screen. Can you see where Can I'm going with this yet? Now onto the main event. Let's take apart some old Macs. Starting out is easy. Slide this off, pop up the keyboard, and then undo six screws. Yeah, fun. Pop off this heatsink and remove the ribbon cable for the keyboard. Nice and easy. Remove these hinge pieces quite carefully because they're quite fragile and then use the same caution to remove the center clutch cover Unscrew the cable retainer and unscrew the hinge screws some of which are in quite tight Then you pull out the cables and Up comes the display hard drive next. I forgot to take out the battery and the floppy drive You have to get up quite close and personal to remove the trackpad cable and then you just undo a load of screws on the underside. I mean just lots and lots of screws. Then you can take the bottom off it, remove the buttons, gently pry up the PCMCIA slots and pull them out. Then the sun starts to set as we remove the memory and remove the CPU. The CPU standoffs are very densely threaded, so it takes a long time to unscrew them with a pair of very small pliers, but then you can remove the logic board. So that's one done. Who was it that said this thing's easy to take apart? Anyway, I'm gonna save us some time and cut to tomorrow when we have all three disassembled and ready for the great combination. Whoa! Well, it's um, it's the next day, and here we have three fully disassembled PowerBook 1400s. Oh, sorry. Um, let's combine three PowerBooks <laughs> into one PowerBook 1400C. Okie dokie. Let's pick out some PowerBook parts. What I'm essentially doing is comparing three machines worth of parts and selecting the bit from each machine that's in the best condition. Some of the choices are easy, like choosing the SSD over the two hard drives. Looks like I'm going to have to take this apart some more so that I can switch the 1400C screen into this nice unscratched 1400CS enclosure. Okay, so it's an hour later, and I have successfully transferred the 1400C screen into the 1400CS plastics. Oh yeah, that looks pretty good. The 1400CS, eh, not looking quite as good. Now, using the magic of editing, we're going to skip on to our fully reassembled PowerBook 1400C. Oh yeah. <laughs> The Power Book. 
1400C Power PC Not so portability I have to use AC But It's a G3 With an SSD it operates at high speed! But running a benchmark takes an awfully long time indeed. I shall just sit and wait. Testing disks and running numbers. Figuring out things while I slumber at my desk. Just waiting for a benchmark test. Here's how it compares to a Power Mac G3. That's fairly impressive indeed. But how does it compare to the stock processor? There we have it, a fully upgraded PowerBook 1400C. That's all we're going to be doing with this machine for this week, but there'll definitely be some more PowerBook 1400 content down the line, such as a battery rebuild so that we can properly revive its full portable nature. I hope you enjoyed this little adventure into the world of 90s portable computing. Circuit board, more soon. See ya. Oh! <laughs>